good morning and welcome to the Hope Community Church vlog, episode number 23. It's the start of a new week, but we're still going to be going through Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. And it's been so good to go through the first uh, part of this letter already. We're halfway through chapter one. And uh, what we've been seeing is the Apostle Paul is writing this letter from prison. And even though he's in chains, he's wanting to encourage the Philippian church. He's wanting to bless them. He's wanting to build them up. And he's wanting them to experience the same kind of joy that he's experiencing. He wants us to experience the same kind of joy in the gospel that he is experiencing, even in his situation. And so what's been happening is that um, Paul's just said that even though he's in prison, the gospel is advancing. In fact, what he's just said is that uh, even though he's in prison, in fact, because of the fact that he's in prison, people are, are emboldened to preach the gospel even more fervently. And so let's read on from verse 15 of chapter one. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am here for the defence of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in chains. So this is the issue that he's trying to address in this situation. He's in prison. People are still preaching the gospel, even being motivated to preach the gospel more because he's in prison. But there are two types of people. The first are people who are motivated to preach the gospel out of love for him. Verse 16, they do so out of love, knowing that I'm here for the defense of the gospel. So they're going, I'm going to stand with Paul. I'm going to preach the gospel, even if it means going to prison. But there are others. And they're taking this opportunity, yes, to preach the gospel, but to do so in a way that makes Paul look bad. Jesus is Lord. But Paul's in prison. So was he following Jesus as well as he could be? Was he really the great leader that we thought he would be? Would God let him go to prison if he was as great a leader as he thought he was? That's the message they're preaching. They're preaching Jesus, yes, but they're also preaching against Paul. I wonder how you'd respond if that was being done to you. Character assassination, we call it. You'd respond with righteous anger, defensiveness. You might speak out against them in this letter if you were Paul. And you'd be right to do so. But look what he says. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. What does it matter? He says. Paul's top priority is not that he looks good in the eyes of people. Paul's top priority is that the gospel is preached to the point that he actually rejoices when the gospel is preached, even if it makes him look bad. In this, I rejoice, he says. That's crazy. He cares so little about what people think about him, yet so much about what people think about Jesus, that he can rejoice even if what people are saying about Jesus makes him look bad. That's his priority, that Jesus looks good. And I think we need to ask ourselves the question off the back of this passage. What is your top priority? Is it that you look good? That people speak highly of you? That people praise you? People acknowledge how holy, wonderful, amazing you are? Or that Jesus looks good? Telling people about Jesus. And in actual fact, these two things are linked, aren't they? Because the more we care about how people think about us, the less likely we are to share about Jesus. And this is Paul's top priority that Christ be glorified. I wonder if for some of us, the reason we share so little of our faith with our neighbors or our colleagues is because we care a bit too much about what they think about us. I know that can be true for me. I wonder if maybe an application for this passage is to pray that God would Help us to view his glory as the most important and ours as much less important. 
But you know, I think there might be an application for us here in how we view other churches as well. We're so quick, aren't we, to write off churches because they do things differently to us. We're quick to say their motives might be wrong. We caricature them. They're too conservative or, or they're too charismatic or they're a bit wild or they're a bit boring or a bit dull. Look what Paul says here. What does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, Christ is preached. I wonder if it can change how we view other churches and instead of viewing them as opposition, instead of viewing them as, as people that we might see ourselves as better than, that instead we pray for them and ask that God would help them to preach the gospel faithfully in their context. So Father, change our mindset, change our mindset towards our brothers and sisters in other churches and Lord, change our mindset towards what we see as the most important thing. That we don't view ourselves and our glory as the most important thing, but we see you being preached and you being made known in the nations, in our communities, the most important thing. In Jesus' name.